This is the Global Broadcasting Service, serving remote outposts since 1928. Hi, everyone. Welcome aboard the Walt Disney World Express Monorail. Caramba, we have something really big for you today. Welcome, foolish mortals. Now then, hang on to them hats and glasses, because this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. This is the DBC Pod with Phil Schoen and Jason Dodge. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's pod. This is the show for the week of January 2nd, 2023. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, This week we're doing our 2023 predictions. If you're interested in what we predicted for 2022, that show was, I think, three or four weeks ago that we kind of reviewed those. Yep. Um, This year we're going to, we're going to, today we're going to talk about top three, top three things we ate at Disney World on our recent trips. And we can hear us talk all about them in our recent two uh, trip report shows. Um, people have been actually enjoying our format, Phil, which kind of, well, I guess it doesn't surprise me, but I'm happy that <laughs> I did that, right? Um, and we appreciate everyone who listened to the whole thing. Yes. It's a little bit of a commitment, but we hope it was fun. It was a massive commitment. I mean, like I when I was uh, doing the editing for this part two, I realized it was an hour and 40 minutes. I'm like, this should have been a three-part. <laughs> but um, alas, here we are. But no, we appreciate you uh, listening or watching, depending on what format you were doing in it. And um, if you don't mind, like and subscribe and all that. But um, top of the things we ate at Disney World. And then our takes on rides people wait the longest on. Uh, there's reports all over the place that Disney World is basically swamped. You had the uh, theory that it's a lot of APs getting back into the parks after a blackout week and people in their tail end of their holiday vacation. And boy, oh boy, are the parks packed. So we're going to talk about that in our hour takes. Uh, but before we get on to our predictions and all the fun discussions, uh, what's going on in our Disney World, Phil? Sure. So the first item uh, that people have been talking about, and I'm sure we will cover it when we go through our 2023 predictions, though, is related to the fireworks show that will be coming or returning to the Magic Kingdom in that uh, D23 put out an article about sort of every big Disney thing they're looking forward to in 2023, which if you haven't read, it's actually a pretty good uh, article. It goes through, you know, kind of the Disney 100 stuff, things that are going on in the parks and the movies and stuff like that. But there was a line in there when it talks about what's coming to the parks that says, and if that wasn't enough, one more fan favorite is returning to the Magic Kingdom the happily ever after fireworks will once again light up the sky with an updated version of the show in 2023. So we know at uh, the D23 Expo, Josh DeMauro said the happily ever after anthem would be returning and people didn't really know what that meant. If it was just like the song going to be used in a different way or totally new show, but just uses the song. This wording makes it seem much more likely that it is just sort of happily ever after version 2.0. And if you are a fan of that show, you're probably happy about this news. I mean, I was one of the ones that read it that was that completely. Like, I don't think they were going to try to retool it or or kind of do whatever. It To me, it was like, it's happily ever after the best fireworks show that they ever put on by, you know, all the different reviews. But they're going to add the Main Street, Main Street uh, projections onto it and kind of update it a little bit, even though the show's only like, what, four four years, 2017? So five years? Yeah. Oh, no, wait, almost six years this, this year, I guess. <laughs> Well, now, yeah. Uh, But yeah, no, I'm excited about this. Um, My wife keeps saying, well, maybe we'll go back this year. And I'm like, okay, well, we got to go when all these things kind of hit. So who knows when that might be? We don't know yet. Uh, Another news item was if, and we reported this, uh, I don't even know when when this was a couple months ago, but that uh, Disney had changed some of the wording related to Genie Plus saying that it could, implying that it could sell out, that it might not be available throughout the day. Well, the first reported cases of the genie plus service selling out happened uh over the holiday week at disneyland though not at not at any of the parks in walt disney world it was uh on december 27th through the 29th on all of those days it sold out you know i think the earliest day was around 11 11 30 in the morning but yeah it basically had a notice on there saying you know the service is no longer available to be bought now I think that's actually a good thing <laughs> that at some yes. point they kind of say like, Hey, enough people have this. There's not enough things available. And as an example of this, I was just going to share, um, uh, you Lynn on our boards, um, said that, uh, somebody came up to her at Hollywood studios around noon who had just bought genie plus and said, it's, I don't know if I'm what I'm trying to do. It's, it looks like there's nothing available here. And she looked at the app and kind of went through it and there were no genie plus lightning lanes available for the rest of the day at Hollywood studios. And this family's like, we just bought something that, 
we can't use. So that's messed up. Yeah. So, I mean, we were trying to figure out now, maybe if they had park hoppers, they were still available the magic kingdom or something like that. But I don't know. I think Disney needs to kind of say like, look, if at some point it's not very usable that don't sell it anymore. So I was glad to see that it's sold well, I mean, out like, at Disneyland, but I think it needs to happen at Walt Disney world on some of these crowded days. No, I mean, like if you just look at the crowds at, any of the parks today, I mean, they're not stopping anybody from doing anything as, as long as there's money attached to it. I mean, right. just, it's nutty. So who knows? But again, so, I, I don't think Walt, Walt Disney World's going to stop. Anything. No, it seems like they're they're definitely more happy to take money for whatever at Walt Disney World. So I guess just advice, if you're thinking about buying it, either, you know, get it at the first of the day. Hopefully, people, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably into planning to some extent, and you know, to buy it right away. Um, but if you, uh, for whatever reason, haven't, uh, just check availability of rides before you decide to to purchase it. I mean, this is mostly a Disney World show. I mean, and I don't think it's sold out ever. This no, it hasn't. Out, it think. hasn't at Walt Disney World now. And if it didn't sell out this week, I don't think unless they change something, actively change something, it's right. never selling out. Yeah. And the last story I was going to cover is that Rock and Roller Coaster at, at Disney announced will be closing for a lengthy refurbishment. Um, starting on February 20th, 2023. So if you have a trip coming up soon, be mindful of that. Uh, they don't have an exact date, but it says it's going to reopen in summer of 2023. So that sort of indicates a fairly long refurbishment. No other details about what's happening. Um, however, there are rumors from various reports that maybe they will be retheming it. Um, that's obviously been mm. around for a while. But there's just it seems to have a little bit more steam, you know, kind of one of those where there's smoke, there's fire type things. Um, I saw one report they're going to retheme it to Queen. I saw another report that it's just going to be a, a Disney IP or something. Um, one report I heard was that it's going to be rethemed to The Incredibles. So I don't know. Um, obviously, I mean, the ride's great as it is. It gets, you know, as you'll see when we get to our next session, it gets long waits as it is. So it's not like they need to build up demand for it. But Aerosmith has been around for a long time. They're not super relevant to the younger crowd, I would say now, for most most people. Um, so I think an update could be good. And it if it's something that ties in more towards, you know, Pixar or something, because you have the uh, Lightning McQueen show there, maybe it could make sense. And I hadn't thought about The Incredibles before, but they do sort of have a retro vibe to them. So it kind of fits in with Hollywood Studios, which has a bit, bit of a retro vibe to it. So I wouldn't be mad at that. My my plan was I would I would retheme it to Powerline, um, in a goofy movie and and play the songs from there and try to be getting to a Powerline concert. I think that would be an easy easy redo and retheme and people would be excited for that. But I don't know. What do you think, Jason? I I haven't like caught these rumors. I've been like in a holiday like fog of just not really <laughs> being up to date on a lot of stuff. Um, I don't really trust any rumors because if you say it's only going to be down for like four or five months at this point, like. That's a, not a lot of time for you know a complete refurbishment unless they have everything ready to go and it's just like right. we're taking out the props from the thing um, the like glass cases as you're going through the queue and have a new video and stuff like that. I guess you can retheme it. Um, your goofy idea, I think we've talked about that before. I mean, I think that's yeah. an awesome idea. That's probably the best one, and that's timeless, right? It's you not have like you know in 30 years whatever. I mean, Queen is older than Aerosmith, right? Basically, so I was surprised about that rumor. I, I don't put much stock in that one. It's not like Queen no. has any specific connection to Disney or anything. What I would like to do is just retheme it like spooky. So it goes with the uh, tower of terror. So there's like a, like a themed area there and they can kind of, that's the only thing I can think of um, outside of just some other well-known, like so, um, you know, musician type of setting, but we'll see. So, but keep that in mind. If you have a trip coming up in the next couple months, that starting February 20th, it will be down, which will, only create more demand for the other attractions yes. in Hollywood Studios, which seems to be the park impacted the most by crowds as far as wait times go. And I think that leads us in nicely to the hour take for this show, which uh, was your idea, yes. Jason. So you want to take the lead in this? Sure. So there was a, a post. I, I don't know who to give this credit to. So Phil, uh, I don't know who the image was, but it was basically <laughs> four screenshots of like the top 30 wait times in all of Disney World right now, or at least today. And um, I thought it was a perfect time for hour takes on rides people wait the longest on. Um, and I kind of classified it as this overrated, like what is wrong with people waiting on these lines this much? <laughs> uh, properly rated, like I can see myself waiting online that long for something like that. And underrated the lines or the wait should be longer given the, the crowds at, at the parks these times. 
Um, so we'll do our overrated first, Phil, and I'll go first. Um, currently, or not currently, but today at, at its peak, Frozen had a 150 minute wait. Um, that is completely overrated as a ride. The ride is is fun. It's enjoyable as a as a kid, but it's not like a great ride like a Remy's or Mickey Minnie's. Um, it's a refurbed, obviously, Maelstrom ride. And my goodness, I cannot like. I'd rather if like there's other rides here that are on this list that had similar two hour plus waits that I would much rather go on than than Frozen. So that that was my yeah. pick. What was your overrated pick? So I, I probably would have picked Frozen if you hadn't. Not that I don't like Frozen, but two and a half hours is a long time. And there's not, Love Frozen. not like and there's not like an interactive queue or anything to keep you busy that time. Um, I definitely feel like the queue quality impacted some of my rides, my picks, too, because, you know, if it's an interesting queue or something to going on, that helps a little bit. Um, I was debating between two well, for the queue that I think is really boring. I would have put the Navi River at 95 minutes, I think an hour and a half of just kind of those switchbacks with some. Mm. little things to see is a little boring um and also remy i know you said that you like that better than frozen stuff but still it's over two hours 130 minutes and while i like remy i think and this kind of relate you'll you'll it'll connect to my properly rated ride um but i don't know i, I like remy i think it's enjoyable but two hours is a long time for that ride. well i, I mean bef- what you did not see is i deleted remy and put frozen <laughs> once i noticed that it had 150 minute wait time <laughs> So Remy was my close second to, to that. So what was your properly rated in, in relation to Remy? Yeah. So my properly rated, I put Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, um, which was listed at 70 minutes, which I, I was tempted to almost say only 70 minutes, which is still, you know, it's still over mm-hmm. an hour. But that's, you know, Remy was almost twice that, right? <laughs> you know, so I think, and I yeah. think Mickey and Minnie's is a better ride. There's, you know, a variety of things to see in the queue and stuff like that. So of the two, I would much rather wait. I think 70 minutes is fairly for for the crowd levels of this size. I don't think that's outlandish for Mickey and Minnie's, which is, you know, a new ride in a popular park and stuff to do. So that was my properly rated. Now I'm with you. And it just, it's, it's probably the best ride at Epcot that we can see a waiting li- because um, you won't be able to see boarding groups, like whenever they sold out for the day for right. Epcot. So there's no listed wait time for guardians of the sure. galaxy at this point. So I assume if Guardians of the Galaxy had a standby, the wait oh, yeah, would yeah. be like <laughs> three to four. I mean, it's it's the fact that Frozen's 150, Remy's is 130 just goes to show how empty Epcot is of attractions that people are willing to sit in a queue for. I think right. that's more likely than not. So um, comparing the two parks is kind of tough, but I'm, I'm with you completely. I'd wait an hour for Mickey and Minnie's. It's one of my favorite rides in, in, in on property. Yeah, and I almost I picked Soren, would... which was 95 minutes. You know, that's, Ooh, I that's another an Epcot. Hour. Yeah, I almost picked that one too. So. <laughs> now, I was thinking about it. I was like, eh, no. it's like if it was seventy, I would think about it <laughs> actually. So, but my properly rated one was Splash Mountain at ninety minutes. So it's an hour and a half. Normally, I would never wait an hour and a half for Splash Mountain, but the fact that it's going down forever in a couple of weeks, I think ninety minutes. I would wait two hours for this ride um, if it's like the last time ever for, your for last you to ride. go on it. Yeah. So that's the only reason why I'm picking Splash. And like Splash could have any number of minutes. And this is like, you know, I'll never be able to go on this ride again. I'm going on it. So yeah. um, I pick Splash. So my underrated ride um, that people wait the longest on is Haunted Mansion only, only had a 70 minute <laughs> wait. It was one of the lowest um, lowest wait times of, of all like the, the the mainline rides, I guess, or the most notorious rides. Um, typically, I mean, like you, you'd see like a 50 to 60 minute wait like on a very busy summer day with this attraction, like 40 to 50 minutes. Yeah. So for like a Christmas time, New Year's crowd of only 70 minutes, um, this ride is being completely underrated by the guests that are in the park this week. So uh, my underrated one was Haunted Mansion. It's one of my favorite rides. It's one of a lot of people's favorite ride, which uh, makes that interesting. So what was your underrated? So my underrated, I picked Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run at, again, quote unquote, only 75 minutes. Um, I just think it's a really fun ride. It has some repeatability and the queue, the way they designed the queue where you kind of get to see the Millennium Falcon from different angles mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, especially if you haven't done this ride before, I would definitely say waiting 75 minutes is is worth it for that. So I felt like, I don't know, compared to a lot of other rides that have, you know, same thing, like you said, you know, these other rides with much longer waits, I, I would rather wait 75 minutes for Millennium Falcon. I almost put Falcon for this one, so we were we were thinking um, eye to eye on this one. I personally, I think Falcon's better than Rise as far as an enjoyable experience. Um, 
maybe i mean it may, maybe rise edges out falcon if it's like your first trip ever to star wars galaxy's edge and it's kind of you're getting into that whole experience and you're not spoiled at all right but like you said repeatability and stuff like that falcon beats it like hands down um in my opinion so um yeah i think those are our takes i, I don't i don't think that surprises any. i think this was rather easy when i was like oh this is perfect well we'll talk well, about but my first take was like i don't know day. if i'd wait in any of these lines you know i was like like even <laughs> well, the, yes. the, the most line was like Winnie the Pooh at 65 minutes. I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'd do that. But, uh, you know, if you're like there and you've committed to going, you kind of have to wait and something, right? Um, so which yeah, ones well, are well, you kind of thinking? Folks like us, as a quick aside, I was at a um, New Year's Eve party and uh, one family was saving up for their once in a lifetime trip to Disney World. They were going to do a split state, Universal and Disney. And they're saving up like $10,000 to like do it right. I'm like, that's good. So do you have a travel agent? And they said, yes. And like, what does that travel agent do? They said, oh, well, helps us schedule things. And says, well, do you trust this person? He's like, well, I guess. I'm like, do you know them, know them? I'm like, not really. It's like, well, 80 days in advance, come find me and we'll sit you through <laughs> and do the whole. So you're aware of what needs to be done. And then there was another couple there that they were going to go down. And sometime next year, they haven't decided yet. I, my first piece of advice was book now and you can just change it whenever. Um, and, and two, Make sure you understand what's involved here. Because, again, like if you look, go back to our trip report and look at the different timings, we never waited more on any line than 30 minutes maybe. And except for me when I was stupidly went to Remy's first thing in the morning, I waited like uh, 55 minutes for that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I would never wait. I would be like, nope. That's why we don't go to the parks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think if I'm going this time of year, it's like we're doing our Genie Plus or whatever. And then we're just kind of taking in the scene or doing shows or something like, I don't know. I mean, this, like, if I'm at Disney World for, I wouldn't go down at, on Christmas. I like being at home with the family, but I can see myself being down there or trying to be down there for New Year's Eve for whatever nutty reason. But that'd be like offsite stay, going into Epcot just to kind of have drinks and be part of the celebration, not, in, not even attempting any of the queues or anything else like that. Yeah. This is just kind of like a, go have some drinks and food and hang out type of thing. That's All basically right. it. Well, thanks for that. I, and if you have some thoughts on which rides you think the wait times get to be overrated, properly rated, or underrated, chime in on our social media accounts. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. We are all at the DBC Pod. And of course, feel free to join our Discord server and chat about all things strategy and lines and Genie Plus and all that sort of stuff. I think I'm going to go and delete the TikTok from our show notes. I don't want to promote TikTok anymore. I stopped posting on there. <laughs> Somebody from, I think it was like either the Atlantic or something else said, TikTok is like digital fentahol um, for for your phones and your minds. So I'm like, okay, let's let's stop promoting that a little bit. So, <laughs> um, but um, maybe what we will promote though on our YouTube channel is that we are starting to add some new content. Uh, yes, that friend of the show, Zach. Uh, he films a lot of the shows and parades and fireworks and stuff like that. So we are going to be adding them to our YouTube channel to try to kind of cross promote and get multiple audiences to see them all in one spot. So a couple of them went up and we will start promoting them, probably get new ones out, you know, once a week or so going on forward. But if, you know, you're at home and you're, you know, I could use seeing the Christmas parade or something like that. We're going to have that content up on our YouTube channel now. Yeah, the Christmas stuff is filtering up throughout this week, so it's it's relevant. So I'm not putting a Christmas parade up in like you know March or something else <laughs> like that. Um, if there's anything that you would like to see, whether it's like maybe a queue that you want filmed or a show or Festival of the Lion King, things like that, um, hit us up on Discord or or on social media, and we'll certainly put in a request um, and, and put that up there for you. And uh, going through uh, just quick note about the Disney Comeback Index. Um, it did have one small uptick because the Walt Disney World Railroad is officially open. And so it made it up to 92.47%. So that's where it'll end 2022. And we will see where it goes in 2023. That's not bad at all. Now, I'm really curious how we hit 100%. So well, that, that'll, that'll be interesting. I, I guess... I, we talked to Matt about a month, month and a half ago. Yeah. We, what was what was the big thing? Do you remember? Off the, I mean, this is a lot of it is still uh, entertainment and stuff like that. Like not all the shows are back and like not mm -hmm. all the full. A lot of the character meet and greets are gone. Um, some of the meals are still missing, like 1900 Park Fair. That's um, true. And then just some things are like I think the big issue is some things just might not never might not never might never come back might ever come back. <laughs> um things like um voyage of the little mermaid supposedly there's you know a mold issue with the building and stuff like that so Ooh. that's probably never coming back you know so 
uh, those were sort of the big things. Um, but, you know, everything gets us a little bit closer, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right, on to our 2023 projections. Um, this is fun, right? Because this is our third year doing it. So we've actually been doing the show long enough to have a track record. Um, though we have not been keeping score of our track record, so no one can reference it unless you <laughs> want to go back to the show and call us out on something. Um, so, Phil, you put this together, and you have a handful of categories here. You've broken down some predictions into nighttime spectaculars, attractions, miscellaneous things, um, media about movies and Disney+, Plus, and, a, and a section about Disney corporate, which I'm going to be absolutely terrible with. <laughs> but, um, Phil, I'll let you steer this yep. one. Why don't you start with the nighttime spectacular? Yeah, so first, yeah, we figure we'd focus mostly on the parks and mostly at Walt Disney World. Um, so the, a number of things that we know are, are going to happen in 2023, so we thought we'd ask about that. But with a lot of the nighttime spectaculars, the first one, which ties to one of the news items, is when Happily Ever After returns, how close to the original version do you think it will be? And when will it uh, return? What date? Will, what's the first date that we will see Happily Ever After back at Magic Kingdom? So my prediction, I'm going to give a month because a date is kind of silly at this point. I I think it's going to come early um, October, kind of October 1st. I think they're going to announce details at like uh, Destination D and push it off to then. Um, However, I could be completely – I mean the the smart answer is probably like – the summer, summer months, like a May or, 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 or June, but I'm going to go with October 2023 on this one. Um, and, and how close to the original version will be? I think it's going to be extremely close with just updated kind of projections and, you know, movie sequences, kind of like how the updated, um, the, um, oh gosh, the, uh, what's, what's the show by the carousel? The, um, the home magic. Oh yeah. Yeah, like the added cocoa to that and everything else like that, or the kind of add IP into older shows. I think they're going to do that, and they're just going to be more Main Street type stuff. Okay. How about you? So I think it's actually going to be April. I think it's going to – the enchantment's going to twinkle away at the end of the 50th, which ends March Smart. 31st. And I think it's an existing show. I mean, maybe they'll need a day or two to overlap, or they'll have some media preview or something like that, but I think it's going to be early April. And I, I, I agree it'll be extremely close. I think they will make – a few tweaks. So to make it clear, like this is version two, it isn't just the same show, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe they'll remove the pirate scene or or something like that. I think, um, so maybe not quite as close as you, your prediction, but, but relatively close, like people who are fans of the show will, they'll see it as version two of the show, but with, you know, one or two, maybe, more significant changes, but it'll still have the same feel for sure. I mean, that, that middle, that middle section could be changed to any kind of IP, right? It's just new projection mapping and um, making sure that the videos hit the cadence of, of like kind of the show type of thing. It's not, yeah. I don't think it's hard to change that, but yeah, uh, I think you're smarter on your project, project uh, prediction for time than, than I am, but uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to, I'm trying to win one here. Right? I want to go for the easy answer. Um, so the next one is related to the other 50th show that didn't last very long, apparently, is Harmonious. And I guess sort of same question is, when do you think that'll twinkle away? And then also, um, what do you think? Do you think they'll bring back Epcot forever uh, before the new show starts? All right. So do you think we're going to have the? F- you're asking me if we're going to have a filler show again? Yes. Yeah, I guess. If, will we have a filler show and will it be just bring back Epcot forever or will it be something different? See, this is a tough one. I, I want to say that the – I'll make the prediction that they won't bring in a filler show at all, um, and it'll just be the new show. Um, and then – are we just asking this question first, and then we'll go to the next one? And then the next one is, is – I mean, I guess you could answer at the same time. When What month do you think the barges will be removed? Ah, the barges. I think the barges go um, – Gosh, that's a oh man, that's a. I don't know how easy it is to take those barges, <laughs> and take them, and put them away. Um, I, I think I think you'll start seeing major changes um, in the early summer, late spring months. So I'll 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 put I'll put a May May number May number a May date May. there. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, so I think they will bring back Epcot Forever. I do think they'll need a filler show because just from taking down the old barges and then getting whatever the new equipment in will be. And I also think they're not. I think this decision was relatively new to be made so i don't think they have the new show ready to go Mm. so i think it's going to be a while before we see the new show so i do think they'll bring back epcot forever as far as the barges being removed i think i agree with your time frame it won't be like april 1st but it'll be 
I think, you know, if the reason they're getting rid of the show is because they know people don't like the barges and executives don't like the barges, they'll want those gone sooner rather than later. I have a question. Okay. Bonus question. Will harm, can you do harmonious without the taco barges and just do it with the ring? with Stargate. I don't think so because a lot of the people can't see that, like they're only seeing the taco barges, so there wouldn't be. And that's where I a lot know, of I'm just, I'm just asking, right? Like, I, mean, I guess theoretically you there? could, but um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, keep going. Um, and then I guess related to uh, another park, um, will Animal Kingdom get a nighttime show in 2023? I get another good question. So I was there. Um, Again, we did this as our, I think it was part two of our, our show. We talked about being in, or I talked about being in Animal Kingdom for the first time at nightfall. So right. you know, night kind of the, um, the tree of life has a, a lighting up ceremony. I think it's the um, beacons of magic kind of thing at, at 6 PM. And uh, I thought it was re- well, uh, very, very nice. It was a wonderful show. Uh, the parks are gorgeous at night. I, I would love walking through them at that time, at that time of day. I really wish they would have a nighttime show. Something to give me, something to anchor me there. Mm-hmm. Um, and but do we will we see one this year? Yes, we will get a nighttime show, but I don't think it's 2023 we, we get one. I think they're going to completely revamp that park once they announce whatever they're going to put in Dino Land, and then once Dino Land comes or the revision of Dino Land, that's when you'll see a nighttime show. And it'll probably be before the Dino Land stuff opens, but it'll be kind of like a package kind of rollout type of thing. That's, part that's of, not 2023. That's part of the evolution of the park. And do you, so do you right. think it will be announced like perhaps at Destination D23 or something like that? Or mm. we won't even hear anything announced about it? I don't think you hear anything. No, no, okay. I, I don't. I don't think we hear anything. I, we might hear. I, I'm, I'm open. To, I bet you we will definitely hear something about Animal Kingdom at Destination D. I don't think we'll, they'll talk about a nighttime show, though. Okay. So I'm very similar to you, but I think I'm on the fence on if it'll be announced. So just to be different, I'll go that they will announce something. Okay. But, won't, but it won't open in 2023. I'm in the same boat. I could go both ways. <laughs> um, the next question I was one you actually added, and I think it's a good one, is will drones be used in any of the nighttime shows in 2023 in a park? So not like what they did at Disney Springs. Will any right. of the- That's exactly why yeah. I put that there. Yeah. Um, I think the answer is yes. I think whatever they're going to do, they might be testing stuff with whatever, if it's Epcot Forever or whatever the- new show is there's going to be something at epcot so i i agree i think drones will be used in the one at epcot i don't think it that show starts in 2023 though so i'm going to say not in 2023 but in 2024 2024 prediction yeah so early (laughs) (laughs) spicy um and then you added will new parties or festivals be announced so i'm assuming you're you're thinking like after hours party type things or something like that or any extra ticket events right whether it's a party that starts at 6 p.m or a party that starts like you know once the park's closed in a legitimate time so like they like the ones that started at like 10 o'clock when the park opened or started at nine when the park closed at nine or yeah. like the um you know the, the halloween or the uh mickey show mickey mickey's uh not so scary type party man my brain is not working today um the question is will they will they be announced yes i think they will be announced i think disney's going to go to a time where there's always a ticketed event that you could go to in one of the parks and um, just like they did at epcot where now you basically have festivals year round there's really no space for new festivals anymore in yeah. Epcot. so i think they're going to bleed that into um, other things so maybe no one festivals but definitely i think parties and i think they're going to want to start expanding those parties if there is enough demand at other parks so obviously I don't think Animal Kingdom can have a party, but uh, Hollywood Studios could probably start having like Star Wars parties and all sorts of cool stuff. Because um, if the Star Cruiser starts kind of going down a little bit, so but they're paying these actors anything, maybe those actors kind of bleed over to Galaxy's Edge and kind of put on some you know fun stuff for one hundred and eighty dollars a person. Yeah. So I guess if I had to pick, it would be it would be yes. I don't know if it would qualify as a party, but I do think there will be more hard ticketed events so whether Mm -hmm. that's like in the past they used to have like the paid early entry to magic kingdom or like the paid after hours at at various things i definitely think there will be more second tickets being sold per day you know for the for the parks so whether they quantify or qualify as a party i'm not sure but i definitely think in 2023 we'll see more hard ticketed events well, I mean, I, I'm definitely you could call that a party, right? Like, okay. I, basically, it's it's a hard ticket event. I think there's got. I think Disney's going to go to a spot where almost every single week there's going to be something that you could pay extra for to be in the parks longer or with a different experience. 
So okay. I, I think they're going to, because I think Disney wants to go to the way of not charging customers more for the same stuff or more for less as we've been talking about for the last couple of years. But if the park does, it stays open the normal time, but you can spend another $880 to stay later for an extra three or four hours. That's up to you. And that's yep. not taking away from the existing ticket. So I think Disney kind of wants to steer that way. Yep. And people pay for it all the time. I was going to, I was just going to say that in the past, there was show that people are willing to pay for exclusivity. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Well, well how about this? Can you? Can, oh, sorry for interrupting, but yeah. it just popped in my head. Can you imagine doing just a week of extra ticket event, not even getting normal park tickets, and just spending the same park ticket money on just like all the nighttime stuff? And that's all yep. you do all week long. I would love to try. I mean, it's going to be more expensive, obviously, because you're not getting yeah. discounted tickets with a larger package. But that might be an interesting. I mean, if they had it, I mean, like you said, they probably would never do it at Animal Kingdom. But if they had it at each of the four parks, and you could get in at mm-hmm. four p.m. each each day for four days and get done what you get done that would be amazing especially in the summer because if you start you know you're missing the hottest part of the day and stuff yep all right so that does it for nighttime spectaculars moving on to attractions when will journey of water open at epcot i think you know i, think I guess the question is, is will it open in 2023 you could uh you could say it won't well open, yeah but... i i think it definitely opens right um, I, I think what the projection was, what end of 2023? Said, yeah, right? so it said late, late 2023, something like that. Is what I says. think one thing Bob Iger does is, is get the middle of the park open, and I think this probably gets open a little bit sooner. What does that mean? Maybe they use that to grab, grab people in toward the tail end of the summer. So I'll put like August, September time frame. Um, if I had to pick a month, I'd say uh, probably September, get ready for October. Uh, a little bit I, earlier. Yeah, I'm similar. I think I think that would be like the earliest it would open. I'm probably more like October, November. So I'll, I'll go October. Mm-hmm. But I think we're kind of on the same page. Like, yeah, they want it open for the holiday season and stuff like that. So, all right. Um, so this ties into if people hadn't seen it, there was a report that James Cameron said that he's pitched Disney about having an update to Flight of Passage using, you know, based off of the new movie. So I guess my question is, will there be any changes to Flight of Passage either happen or at least be announced in 2023? Um, I'm definitely, definitely yes to the announcement, uh, especially this. This will go to one of the questions that we have predictions for um, Avatar, uh, Wave of the Water, um, yeah. box office predictions. But it's it, the movie's a smash success. It's, you know, it's hugely successful. It has legs. Um, they're definitely going to leverage that with an existing land. Um, I don't think we'll get an announcement for an addition to Pandora, but I think they'll they'll do some like updates and, and, and refreshing of you know some of the IP and stuff like that. Yep, I'm in the same boat. I think, um, and maybe I'm gonna just play this card again. I said at uh, D23 Expo they were going to talk about updates to Animal Kingdom. They, I mean, the, other than the Blue Sky thing, they didn't really do much there. I think that'll be a topic at Destination D23. So maybe it's just more details on the Blue Sky or something. But I could see them just announcing, you know, we're updating the film or something like that. That's not like, you know, we're announcing we're creating Galaxy's Edge or something like that. That's something that that could be announced at Destination D23. So mm-hmm. I would, I'm, I'm with you. I definitely think it announced... I mean, it's just a film. Theoretically, they could get it done and open this year, but uh, I'd be surprised they do anything like that fast. And they still have, you know, more movies coming every couple of years. So I think yeah, it'll probably I open in 2024. I think, but. yeah, I think they're, they, they have, they'll have like a blue sky type of announcement, maybe a little bit more firm. Like we are definitely bringing, you know, more Avatar to, to you nearby. But yeah. I think with the movie doing so well as it's doing right now with more on its way they're, they're saying like let's get ready for this and they're, they're gonna i mean they've already invested in the land it's not like yeah. they're just like gonna build a new like oh we're gonna open a pandora land no they've already done that and um yeah, there's gonna, definitely going to be um some additions to it in the years to come um i think what we'll see is an announcement to like maybe spruce up flight of passage that type of stuff but I think we'll start also hearing rumors about using the expansion pad in Pandora. I think so. I think rumors are going to be around. Nothing announced officially, but rumors. Okay. And that, I mean, I guess that ties to the next question of just will there other changes for Animal Kingdom be announced? And that could be, yeah, like these rumors of expanding Pandora, more details on the Moana and stuff like that, or anything else change. Will we hear more? So anything a little bit more concrete than just the blue sky thing about Animal Kingdom in general? In 2020. I think we'll, I think we'll definitely hear something this year about what's happening in Dinoland. 
Um, I can't tell. I'm not going to go on even guess what level of detail and what like confirmation. It might be just a confirmation of like, this is the the blue sky stuff is real and here's what it is or that type of stuff. But there will definitely be an announcement for that part of the park. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, At least that and maybe some stuff with Avatar. Maybe, you know, I I think of the parks, this is probably the one that will hear the most. Mm -hmm. specifics uh details about things coming Uh, not like okay we're we're this will be you know we're starting work tomorrow or anything like that but more than just the blue sky it'll be maybe somewhere in between concrete and the blue sky yeah um yeah so i think speaking uh, of concrete (laughs) speaking of concrete will epcot be complete by the end of 2023 i'm gonna go and i guess by complete we mean what's currently being worked down. down. Not that, yeah. you know, like they'll probably have round two in a couple of years or something like that, but just what's currently being worked on. Will that be done by the end of 2023? Let me, let me refine the question because this is the one I added on here. Uh, will the construction walls come down in, I don't, well, I don't even know what neighborhood that's called now. World um, Celebration. World Celebration. Will World Celebration and be World walkable? Nature because I guess the Moan is technically yes. in World Nature. But. So yeah, will the construction walls come down? I hope and you know what? Because I'm a positive thinker, I'm going to say yes. But it's going to be kind of like a late type of thing, getting ready for the holiday season 2023, maybe like a November time frame, in my opinion. Because those 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 buildings are going up. I just don't know how fast the additional buildings will be able to be like completed. Yeah. the, word, the That's my concern with saying yes, like complete by the end of 23. I think it'll be largely complete and you'll be able to like walk through most of it. But I don't. I don't think they'll be totally done until like probably Q1 2024. So I will say, I will say it won't won't be complete. It'll be much better than it is now. Um, You'll definitely be able to navigate that part of the park better. Um, And I certainly think, you know, Moana will be over and open and stuff like that, but I I don't think they'll get everything done because some of those buildings they're still doing structural stuff for and things like that. Yeah, I, I think I think largely they'll be down, but I think those buildings might be like closed, like you know, yeah. with like some nice stuff on the windows that's kind of making them look pretty, but obviously hiding construction inside. And the only other thing is, could they finish the construction of those buildings? Absolutely, because there's not a lot that they're building there. Right. It's not, nothing complicated. They're just like storefronts and you know that type of thing. However. I'd be worried about being able to hire enough people to kind of staff all that and the entertainment that has to go along with it and the booking of that entertainment and stuff. Like, cause I, doesn't some of the revised drawings of that have like stages and stuff like that. For like yeah. There's, they're like supposed it. to be in the connections cafe or where, where commuter core, where it was, there's going to be a stage that you can see from both sides and there'll be live music and stuff like that. So I think a lot so, of it is supposed to play into the festivals and things like that. So that they'll bring mm-hmm. more of the festival into that area. And I think it's going to be great. I just don't think that it'll be fully open because I think they have to have a, a, a hard date where like, yes, it's definitely going to be open by, you know, December 20th and be able to know that it's happening before December right. 20th. So they start booking, booking people months in advance to come in there and fill those, those spaces. Cause I don't think they're going to want like just, you know, Randy and the quartet from like local Orlando to come out there and play like the opening weeks of when that thing comes. I think they want to open it up with some, you know, respectable, good, you know, musicians and stuff like yeah. that to kind of play some good stuff. Okay. And I don't know where I got the name of that band from, by the way. That just kind of <laughs> They're all awesome. in my brain. <laughs> uh, um, so the next question is, will, and kind of we're going park by park. So will there be any announcements about updates to Hollywood studios? God, you know, I want to say yes to this, but I don't think so. Cause, and I'm rather sad because of that. Um, I mean, I, I think there should be, based on i think a lot of negative feedback people are getting with that just a story you told at the beginning yep. of the show right like you can't we bought genie plus and we can't even use it anywhere um i think they're far far away from actually doing anything i'm surprised by the rumors of the rock and roller coaster retheme like stop retheming things go build <laughs> more stuff right? right um if anything i think you know they might make announcements for like you know we're going to bring the mandalorian to the uh star Star Wars area in, in the um, animation courtyard, like yeah, you know, that type bay. of stuff. Yeah. Does that count? I mean, does that count? In my mind, because my answer was going to be, I could see small things like that, like a summer festival type thing, but nothing big. I don't think there'll be anything big announced for Hollywood no. Studios. So yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Mandalorian one. type level, I would say doesn't qualify for what we're talking about here. Yep. Um, something that takes le- crowds away from the parks. So that's basically what I'm qualifying it as. And I don't yeah. think so. There's no going to be yeah. crowd absorbers. And the last one is just any news about any uh, additional Magic Kingdom additions. 
So this is a big one. So if they do some big announcements about Animal Kingdom, um, which is probably more closer. Let's say they're both working on these things, right? Let's say they're, yes, this is something that's been actively being planned. I think Animal Kingdom will always be first on that slate of things to do. And I don't think they're going to want to drown out those plans. Because if I'm going to go with, yes, the Animal Kingdom stuff is going to be announced, then I'm going to say that Magic Kingdom stuff won't be announced. They want to be able to solely focus on Animal Kingdom, give its time to shine. So if there is a Magic Kingdom announcement, it's not happening until 2024. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I mean, you never know. I mean, I didn't see them adding Tron and when they announced like that theater and stuff like that. So who knows? They do seem to mm. want to keep adding stuff there. I mean, obviously there's crowds. You always need more things, but I don't think there'll be anything big there. You know, again, maybe some small addition or something like that. But I mean, heck, just bringing back Happily Ever After is en- <laughs> enough to bring people back to the park, right? So In churros, right? Like, you yeah, know, whatever. <laughs> I mean. Yep. Okay. Moving on to miscellaneous. Um, so the, when will trams return to Epcot and Hollywood studios, which the fact that they're not there yet is, is not good, but that's where we're at. I like how you said when and not if, uh, <laughs> I mean, it could be if, I mean, they could decide that, you know, they, they're working on more parking lots for Epcot that kind of go out further. So maybe they decide you don't need trams because of the way they're aligning the parking lot. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I did say when, but I guess the answer could be never. Um, yes, I think they'll return, um, when, um, I'd say probably for the summer season. If yeah, gonna, I, I mean, like they should be returned tomorrow or I mean, in, or, or next week, I mean, right? They should have been returned six months ago or a year ago, but yeah, it's ridiculous. If, if we get through another, you know, hundred degree summer without trams in those parks, that's just, there's no excuse. So yep. yeah, I, I, I'll say the same thing for the summer season. Um, next one is, will the dining plan return? And if so, what form will it take? Like, will it be the basically the same thing as before, or will there be a different type of dining experience? You know, way way of pay, prepaying for your dining, but it's not not called the dining plan. Hmm. Will it return? I mean, like, I'm going to get bitten in the butt again by saying, "Will it return?" I'm th- I think it will return because I think there's enough demand. People want it, and yep. Disney can find a way to make money with it. Um, so I think yes, it will return. What form will it take? Um, I think it's going to be primarily the same, uh, same form. Maybe it'll have different tiers or different names associated with it. Maybe you can build your, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it'll be put into like genie plus, like you can, you know, with genie plus you can buy the meal plan for the day. So maybe you can't buy it for your whole vacation, but you can buy it for the day of type of thing. Who knows? But um, actually that wouldn't work. <laughs> you need ADRs for half the things anyway. So yeah, yeah. well, I mean, I guess that's one yeah, way to fill up, right. uh, to fill up restaurants that haven't been filled yet. You can't that's make true. things until day of. I don't know. That's an interesting thought. Um, Ooh, so I, I think, think yes, but I think it's going to be a different form. It's going to look more like what they've been doing for some of the um, UK groups have been able to book where you basically get like dining credits. Like you get so much dollars kind of added to your account that can be used at the restaurant. So I don't know if it'll be exactly like that, um, but I think it'll take a different form. But I think there definitely will be some way of sort of prepaying for your dining. So, because I think people miss that more all inclusive sense to their uh, Disney trip and people like to be able to do that. So they could kind of budget ahead of time. They could maybe hide the Mm -hmm. details of the specifics from their spouse on the cost of things and kind of just put it all in there and just say, okay, (laughs) it's all paid for. Just order what you want. Don't worry about it. Like, don't worry about the number on the menu you know, that sort of thing. I think something will come back, but I think it'll be a lot different. Like just like when they brought back annual passes, they have different names and genie plus instead of just calling it fast pass, even though it's so similar, I think it'll have a different name, but kind of try to achieve the same thing. Anecdotal evidence. And again, at the same new year's Eve party, talking with the one couple is going to do their um, once in a, in a lifetime trip. They had heard about the dining plan, and they were when I said, well, it hasn't come back. They were kind of disappointed because they liked the idea of an all inclusive pay or prepay. Exactly. And I think a yeah. lot of people are the same way. Yep. So, I, I mean, if you go look at a lot of the menus. Right. So this is like the first time that we ate at a couple restaurants. Or actually, just uh, we looked at a couple different menus, ate at the Rose and Crown and noticed that most of the menus are so slimmed down now that you could. And most of them are prefix menus anyway. I was going to say that, that more and more places are going to a prefix anyway. So whether it's called the dining plan or you just get dollars that you can use and like obviously if you go to california grill the prefix there is going to be more than the prefix somewhere else but you can choose how to use your dollars or whatever um 
I could see that. And it just helps, I think, with booking packages and incentives that travel agents can use and stuff like that. So I think something will come back, but it'll be a little different. Well, I mean, here, here's here's one thing to think about. Right. So as they get better capacity through the dining, uh, or through the different restaurants with, you know, front and back staff getting kind of beefed up throughout the year, hopefully that gets better, which probably should. Um, you can see them holding open reservations every day for like because there's a lot, definitely a lot of people that don't like making reservations for restaurants 60 days in advance or 180 days in advance, like back in the day. So maybe. There'll be like windows where like, okay, you get to choose like a prefix menu. You get to the re- a restaurant, you get to choose from these three, you know, appetizer or like, you know, two appetizers, two entrees, two desserts type of thing. You got to pick one of each. Maybe you'll have a message for Genie Plus, like here are the four different restaurants you get to eat at tonight. Which ones would you like to pick? And then you can make your, your dining reservations at the time. So you have maybe an a la carte in the morning for when you want to pick. And then yeah. that's how they do things. Who knows? We'll see. And if and if if Genie's data gets better, like not Genie Plus, but Genie itself, and they get more predictive, maybe they kind of maybe they're just waiting for that data to help you know people be able to pick restaurants the day off. Because most people like picking a restaurant when they're out at vacation, like that 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 lunchtime. Like, where would you like to eat tonight? And have a kind of a list of different things you can try. Yeah, so man. What about that? All of a sudden, you get push notifications that say, "Hey, you don't have dining dinner plans in your schedule. Have you thought about X, which is around and has an opening right now or yep. something like that? You know, we'll see. Uh, next one is related to magic band plus what new functionality beyond journey of water. Cause there is a, a rumor now, or there was a kind of a little video where they said there'll be some sort of functionality with journey of water. That sounded like shaking your fist with a magic band plus that'll interact with the, that exhibit. Um, beyond that, we'll, what other f- new functionality will be announced for Magic Band Plus? I think, if, if any. Well, I mean, well, uh, here's the thing: I, there's a lot more going on in the parks with your Magic Band than I ever thought there was going to be when it got there. And we talked about this in our trip report. Yep. I think we're just going to add more haptic things to kind of nudge your attention when something's going on around you, and like maybe, you know, when you walk near, like when a character's kind of walking through the park, maybe it starts buzzing, so you, you can kind of look up and see what's going on around you. Maybe it buzzes, um, you know, more intensely as a character gets near you, type of thing, or it just lights up like the haunted mansion thing is like really, yep. really cool. So, I think as they build things, they're going to start installing RFID tags for this type of stuff and new things just to kind of interact. And it's just simple little tiny touches that Disney's famous for that kind of just add a little bit. Because there's just a little bit of additions made my kids super happy to have these things on their wrist throughout the day. Oh, it's glowing. It's doing this. And they would run. They would run over it. Anytime they saw a gold statue, they, they would bolt for that and just start waving their hands like crazy people. Here, I'm thinking of grumpy old man. I'm like, I know what's going on. <laughs> That, but no, the kids love it. So I think they're going to, I think they're going to continue just as they build the park and refurbish the park and whatever. They're just going to add little touches along the way. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're going to announce anything. I think it's just a lot of that stuff's just going to be built in and it's just start happening. Yeah. I think similar. I think there could be something, you know, like where they used to have the, uh, that game on around magic kingdom was it sorcerers of the kingdom with the cards and stuff like that, mm-hmm. where, you know, I think there's, you know, I guess it depends how successful maybe the DuckTales thing is, which I know doesn't use the Magic Band Plus. But if people like really like using something where you see physically things happening in the park, I could see some more things happening like that. Or, you know, if they build out Pandora more where the Magic Bands actually interact with the plants or the animals or something like that. I So I think maybe just a step up from what you're saying, but but along the lines of like I could see one or two things that do get kind of announced, like this is a new thing coming to this area. But I don't think it'll be anything major, but just more more little things around i don't see and just to kind of refine my answer to the question um i don't think anything's going to be announced like this is a new functionality for the magic band plus it's going to be like add-ons to a major announcement and oh, okay magic band does this. gotcha and this, okay like, so okay it's not yeah, be a magic band announcement it's just gonna be part of other announcements so like, i mean so yeah. similar like with journey of water where it's not a magic band announcement but like hey this is something new and it'll have magic band yes. functionality related to it okay. i think every major announcement is going to have something with their magic okay. band pluses in it yep that makes sense. Um, will there be adjustments to the park reservation system? I think definitely there, uh, there's changes coming to park reservations. There's too many people that hate the darn thing, even though I, I don't understand why people hate it. Um, I mean, I understand why people hate it. I just don't understand. I don't think it's a big deal. You and, you and I have talked about that before. Yep. Um, I think if I'm, if I'm going to project the changes, we talked about this already with the rumors that was supposed to happen in Q1 next year. I think it's basically reservations are going to be completely gone for on-site guests 
Uh, APs will still have to make reservations and uh, reservations will come with day tickets. So if like you can't, if day, tickets are sold out for the day, obviously you can't get into the park. So right. they'll, they'll have that type of stuff. Um, and I think that's probably going to happen if I had to guess before the summer season. Yep. I think I'm um, right on board with you. I think there's, especially now if like magic kingdom or some of the parks are going to have different prices and stuff like that. Like you're going to have to make buy a ticket for a park day. Why do you then also mm-hmm. need to make a park reservation? So that'll kind of be your park reservation and um, they'll just keep track of that and hopping and stuff like that. But maybe for annual pass holders who, you know, don't have to buy a daily ticket, they'll still have to make a park reservation or something like that. I, just I, think, it'll, really... I think it'll be a little easier for them. Like right now, I know that a lot of they can only make three or whatever, um, but maybe we'll see more changes coming to the annual pass program where the highest level, which will go up way up in price, you won't have to make any reservations or you have unlimited reservations or something like that. I just had a really bad idea of how you could do this that I, th- I can definitely see Disney making stu- a stupid decision to, to adopt this is that when you buy um, your uh, ticket package with your hotel stay, instead of making reservation specific parks, you make decision like I, I want two Magic Kingdom tickets, two Epcot tickets, and then like, you know, you know, one Animal Kingdom and one Hollywood Studios ticket like my last vacation. Yeah. You get to use them any day you want, but you have to you have to classify the ticket as a specific park. I think that would be terrible because it's just it's the same thing with a little bit more extra freedom, but um, it's to me it's like um, it's a half an attempt to kind of do things. It doesn't do anything for anybody because people are still going to complain. How do I know I want to go to Magic Kingdom two days instead of three days? That type of thing. Yeah, I and mean, there's going to be some way. They know Magic them. Kingdom is the most crowded, and they know Hollywood Studios isn't the most. Like they're going to want to have some way of pushing people to Epcot and Animal Kingdom more. And I mean, that, oh, can you can you see how complicated? It's- can you see how complicated your spreadsheets are going to be? Like if you buy, you know, as you progressively get more and more magic kingdom days for your ticket package, they get more, and more expensive. expensive. And it's just like, then you have to like find the most balanced points. Like how many times can I go to the magic kingdom before it gets to and like, that's just, that's like, I can see Disney doing something like that. Cause it just adds, that's just more complexity. That's <laughs> doesn't need to be there with not only variable ticket pricing for the parks, but variable increasing ticket prices based on how many you, you get. Anyway. Uh- all right, I'm um, trying to finish this up. Will the parks be as crowded or will we start to see more promotion? So I guess this is sort of a, yeah, like the parks have been crazy proud, crowded, whether it's been revenge travel or what. Will that continue or will it start to slack off and Disney start needing to have more promotions to get the uh, the crowd level back? I don't think it slacks off, but I don't think it um, – I, I think it, like, peaks with, obviously, your seasonal variations yeah. to, to when people go. I think I think what we saw this year is going to be the baseline of what the parks are going to look like, uh, look like um, at least in the near future. Yeah. I, if you ask me if 2024 is going to be any different, I think maybe you start getting lower uh, attendance in 2024 just because of word of mouth really kind of – takes that long because there's people still complaining about can't do anything the parks are overcrowded and i think that takes about two or three years to kind of circulate around yeah i agree i think it'll be about the same maybe they there will continue to be some more spreading out you know obviously christmas you know this holiday week is is always going to be busy just because kids are off from school but you know with the pricing and everything they've been trying to push people to try to go to slower times if they can i think that'll continue to happen and maybe they have some like promotions for the slower time just to try to move people to that time versus the, the busier times. But I don't think it'll be like a huge push that, Oh my God, like no. attendance is way off and we need to, we need to fix that. With you on that one. Okay. Um, the next one is, will there be any Skyliner announcements? So this could be uh, around new restrictions. So like only if you're staying on those resorts, you can use them or something like that, or perhaps expansion of it. I don't think there's going to be. I put this. I put this on there, and I'm going to say no. There's going to be no <laughs> announcements. But I'm asking to see what um, if you had any thoughts on it because I, I don't think they're going to change anything right now because it's just too much of a um, major build to, for for them to do that right now. I think they probably uh, want to, but yeah, I think the same. Uh, I, I really can't think, see any restrictions. Um, I think it just gets too complicated for the slight benefit you might see from it, and I think they want people to you know, to, to try it out and go to the resorts and see the resorts. And if, mm-hmm. you know, maybe they're, they're not staying at a Disney resort and they try this and be like, wait a minute, we could just stay here and do this. All, you know, it almost like is self promotion. <laughs> um, yeah. 
I don't think there'll be an announcement. The only thing I could see is if that's, I do think at some point they'll announce some way of getting from Animal Kingdom Lodge to Animal Kingdom besides a bus. And maybe mm. they'd announce, they decide that's going to be a Skyliner. But otherwise, okay. I, I don't, I don't see it. And, and I don't know if that'll be in 2023, but that would be, if anything, I can see that's them making that announcement. I can see that yeah. being an announcement, but not for this year. Right, for sure. Oh, yeah. Another 2024. There definitely won't be any um, construction on it this year. No. No. Um, And then the last question for this round um, is Will Genie Plus remain functionally the same through 2023? I'm going to say no, um, because I would even say adding the modify button um, changes the functionality of Genie Plus quite a bit because there's different strategies and using it, you, you use them quite well on your feet. As, yep. as they kind of were implemented. Um, I, I could see some changes to Genie Plus. What they are, I, I really don't know, and I don't want to take 20 minutes of thinking about <laughs> on the show, like what those could be. Um, and that, that's kind of like another armchair topic type sure. thing that we could talk about in, in the weeks to come. But um, I don't think there's any major uh, changes to Genie Plus. I think it's just making too much money for them. Um, I, I th- if anything, you might see limit more limitations on it as uh, the year goes on. But um I don't really yeah. actually see anything happening. Yeah, I could see similar um, that they start. I could see them maybe raising the price and then continuing to raise the price, but then actually having a cap so that if you're spending, you know, on peak days forty dollars, you're actually going to be able to use it. Um, the only other thing I could see is perhaps some sort of increased benefit for staying on property with it, because right now there's not really any benefit <laughs> to staying on property. Yeah, um, a little bit for the individual lightning lanes, but not for Genie Plus. So whether that's they get the earlier booking or if you stay on property, you can prepay for it or something like that. But some sort of benefit to on-site guests with it, but nothing major. That's a good point. I could see saying like you get to book yours starting at seven o'clock. That doesn't change, but non-resort guests have to book theirs once they enter the park. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. That's a possibility, I should say. So that does it for the parks. Um, Do you want to keep going or should we cover part two next week? Let's now nah, it's the new year. Let's let's power. Maybe we don't do the corporate stuff because that's kind of we, we all right. We'll, we'll just get through media. I, um, I think that's not too bad, yeah. right? Uh, so for it's media, movie yeah, movie stuff. Uh, which of the MCU movies will be the biggest hit most talked about? And for people who don't know, the three coming out are Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and The Marvels. I think it's going to be. I, I want. I I want to hope that it's Ant Man and the Wasp because it has some really interesting things on what the next phase is going to be about. But um, like Doctor Strange too, I'm, going, I'm probably going to be very disappointed in that. Um, and it's probably going to be the most fun one. Is going to be uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. I'm, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say. My heart says Ant Man. My brain says Guardians. <laughs> so I, I actually am very similar in that um, it's funny that you mentioned about Doctor Strange because that's how I'm feeling about Ant-Man and the Wasp is that it's kind of getting built up with Kang and stuff blah blah but I think it's going to fall short of like wild expectations I and I hope I'm wrong but I yes. think that's what's going to happen with it whereas Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 it's the last one that's you know with this group it's you know James Gunn obviously left and is now running DC and stuff like that I think it's going to be sort of that end of an era Everyone's going to want to watch, go to see it and kind of have like emotional send off for this group of characters. And I think big things are going to happen in it. So I think we're, we're, we're on the same page. Yep. Um, which animated movie that is coming out in this year will be better. And by be better, I mean, uh, um, received, well-received, make more money and stuff like that. So we have elemental coming from Pixar studios and wish coming from Disney animated uh, studios. I think it's definitely going to be Wish. I don't really trust Pixar movies right now. Um, they're great movies, but they're not like changing the zeitgeist of pop culture anymore at this point. Um, and just just for the sake of time, that, that's all I'll say. I, I don't know too much about either movie other than what you saw in like teasers and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, so, just the, um, I'm, I'm fully on board with you. The more I see about Wish, the more I mean, it's it's it's. It just it's gonna have music. It's gonna have like talk about wishing stars and like I don't know. The more I oh, yeah. I read about it, I feel like it could be like the next Encanto. I think it could be a surprise how big and how well it's received and how it's like people are pushing for it in the parks and stuff like that. I think it could mm-hmm. be a surprise big hit. So yeah, definitely that. Um, I grouped a number of movies together to kind of or, or 
to say, do you think either will be good? Both are good or neither will be good. Uh, Indiana Jones five or the haunted mansion, the new version of that movie coming out. Um, I want to say the haunted mansion is going to be good, but I'm going to say both are not going to be good. I actually, no, I think, I think there's going to be a basement level of quality to both of these films. Like they're not going to be terrible movies, right? But I don't think any of them are going to get me out of my house to go see them in the theaters. And I'm not rushing to rent them or stream them. I'll, I'll get to them when I, when I can, even though I'm a huge indie fan, Crystal Skull just basically took me out of it. So, um, yeah, I think I'm pretty similar. I think that I have a glimmer of hope that Indy five will be really good because I think they know they can, like they have to kind of make up for Crystal Skulls. And this is yeah. you know, definitely going to be the send off for, for Harrison Ford and how it kind of moves forward and stuff like that. So I'm I'm hopeful that one is like a really great big hit and you know big time movie. But I kind of am but, with but come you on. That- do you trust Lucasfilm to handle another Harrison Ford character in a big send off? I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't, I mean, this is another Kathleen Kennedy kind of not her movie, but like she's overseeing all the production right. for all the movies. I just don't trust that they'll be able to handle the character very well. It, it, the premise looks awesome. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love the teasers that they put out. Um, I just, I don't, I don't expect anything major. Yeah. I think I'm the same with you. Both good, not great. But if I had to pick one that maybe surprises with how good it is, it would be Indy Five. But you never know. Okay, I'm the um, other way. Like if I had to pick one to to surprise, I'd be I'd be Haunted Mansion. Okay. Um, when will Way of the Water exit theaters, and will it hit two billion? Um, it's currently at one point four billion worldwide. Yeah, so I think it will hit two billion, and I think it'll be in the theaters for like probably through spring break. I would, if I had to guess. So I guess through March. Right, beginning of April. Uh, yeah, so, so, so basically Q one, all of Q one, and maybe bleed into Q two. Um, I'm pretty similar. I definitely think it'll hit two billion, even if it takes like several re releases yeah. and stuff like that. I think they'll 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 want to make it a big thing. You know, maybe they'll have a director's cut they release or something like that. Um, I th- so I think the first run, yeah, probably at least into March. Um, but like I said, I could also see them re- bringing it back in the fall or something like that, um, or even in the summer, just to if to add more more content to the, the theaters. The next one comes out, and like this is every other year, right? It's every other year, it? yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so I can see them re-releasing this again for holiday the holiday season, exactly. Or like that. Yeah. Okay, and, and then the, the last one I wanted to pair up <laughs> with your indie conversation because I didn't realize it's a it's a Lucasfilm <laughs> type of thing. Um, I'll ask you, Phil, so you get to go first this one, um, <clears throat> so we can bar me from going on a diatribe. Uh, will we see Star Wars announcement beyond the D-plus shows sometime uh, this year? Um, I think we'll get something at Destination D23 or, or either there or elsewhere, maybe at one of the, I think, what is it, it's like right around Easter is, is the Star Wars celebration. I think they will announce a a little more details about a new movie. I don't think it'll be like a new trilogy or anything like that, but I think we will get an, a more concrete announcement about a new movie coming out. It might, it might not be out for a while, but I do think we get something for theater release announced. I don't, I don't think we will. I don't think they know what they're doing with the property, but they know what they're doing on the Disney plus stuff. Cause all of it's been decent quality and, and entertaining stuff that hasn't really um, angered people. Like everybody basically loves almost all of the content to some degree. Um, I just don't, I think they're terrified of putting any movie content out and having it flop again. So I think it's delayed even more yeah. until they can kind of figure it out. I just think with the, how well received like Andor was and how people seem really positive about like Rogue One, I could see like another standalone movie like that. But oh, not I mean, anything sure, major. maybe. Yeah. yeah. I, th- that's what I think will get announced that that'll be their next try is like a standalone movie that's not too. Um, of, of a chance where they're committing to another trilogy or something like that. Yeah, uh, you're you're probably right. If that's going to happen, that that's what's going to do. Uh, and Phil, I think we're going to end the show here again. Okay. We miss out on our top three, <laughs> what we ate um, at uh, Dis- our Disney World trip. Um, I guess we'll we'll again we'll save this for next week. Um, I want to say that at least one of mine, which I don't think I ever would put um, on here is a breakfast item at magic kingdom, which kind of surprised me. So a little bit of teaser for next week. We'll definitely get to these to next week. This has okay. been like pushed off far enough. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this show and our predictions for 2023. If you have any other blockbuster predictions for anything, Disney, 
Uh, make sure you post them with Disney uh, on one of our social media or come on to Discord and have that conversation. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I think that'll be our official uh, Discord engagement topic this week is just what are your predictions for 2023? <laughs> DBC. We haven't done one in, in several well, weeks. I'm kicking it off. We're bringing it oh. back. <laughs> awesome. So, well, Phil, you'll set that one up. Um, thank you again for everybody for listening. Make sure you like and subscribe. Have a good week, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Take care, all. Bye, everyone.